This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, it's Wednesday. We're doing Community Matters with Tom Yamachika. He is the president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, and he helps, under, helps us understand so many important things about the way our system works and doesn't work uh, in the square building and about the taxes we pay and about the benefits we get. Welcome back to the show, Tom. Thank you for having me on the show, Jay. You wrote a very interesting article in Civil Beat a few days ago, um, and it was about uh, a provision in the existing what state constitution requiring a balanced budget. A lot of people, you know, know about that, but the article was interesting because it revealed that that provision doesn't work so well. Can you talk about it? Sure. We have a, a provision in our state constitution uh, giving what's called an expenditure ceiling. Okay. And um, when we have expenditures that are uh, going to exceed the ceiling that are proposed by the governor in his budget, for example, uh, the governor is supposed to, you know, say, oh, we're going to exceed the ceiling by X million dollars, and here's why. And then the legislature is supposed to sign off on it by passing a bill uh, with two-thirds majorities, uh, you know, with, with the, uh, the overage and the reasons for it. So, uh, so, so I, I kind of looked at the, uh, the governor's um, budget, the, the supplemental appropriations budget for fiscal year 19, and, and, he's, and there's, you know, something in, in the appendix there. Uh, that says, yes, we, we are going to um, exceed the budget, and the reasons for this excess, I'm quoting now, uh, are the substantial costs of social assistance entitlements, support for public education, fringe benefits, and other critical requirements. In other words, government costs money. We know that. Yeah, we know where, government costs money. Where's the surprise money. here? Yeah, where's the surprise? Is there anything unusual in anything that I just mentioned? Oh. So, so why would that be a justification for, uh, you know, busting the, busting the budget ceiling? Well, I, and another question that flows out of that same quote, so to speak, is, wait a minute, it's against the law. In fact, it's against the Constitution um, not to have a balanced budget. And isn't he saying that he's not going to be able to follow that, that he will, in fact, not follow that? No, uh, the, 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 the balanced budget uh, provision is, is in a different place, and they always balance the budget. Now, when they give the budget to the legislature, it may be out of balance. And I, and I think the last time uh, they gave it to the legislature, it was $200 million short. So, so, so then, you know, the, 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 the poor people at, at the legislature had to make up the difference uh, somehow by, you know, nipping here, tucking there. Uh, but they had to make up $200 million, and, and it was not a pretty process. Uh, I, I, I do you know, feel for the, uh, the legislators who were caught in the middle trying to get that done, but they had to pass a balanced budget because that's one of our constitutional requirements. So the budget comes up, say, $200 million in excess of a balance, and it goes back to, I guess, the money chairs, the money committees, uh, finance in the House and what is it, Ways and Means in the Senate. Right. And probably they have to talk about it among themselves between the two and, and they have to slice and dice $200 million off what was proposed to them, what was last settled on. Uh, not, not only slice and dice, but there's also revenue enhancement, right? If they can enact new taxes, uh -huh. then, then that uh, lessens the amount of slicing they have okay. to do. Okay, and that explains the Conam Amendment, um, trying to raise money from, for education. Does it? Uh, no, I don't think it's. I don't think it's related. I don't think it's related, uh, because they have to pass it within the context of you know, the current session. Right. Okay. It's a timing issue. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you know, I always wondered about this time. Is how how fine a point can you make on the budget? Uh, so two hundred million is a you know that's that's visible like a neon sign at ten miles away. <laughs> but but you know what about what about one million or five million or ten million. I mean, how how accurately can the legislature actually balance the budget? It's a moving target, isn't it? Um, because you don't know exactly what your revenues are going to be. For that matter, you don't know exactly what your what your you know check writing is going to be. Um, yeah. How so close so can what they, they get? So what they have to do is uh, the state constitution also provides for uh, a forecasting mechanism called the Council on Revenues mm. or COR. 
And, and what they do is they come up with official revenue estimates, and, and those are the numbers the legislature has to use by constitution. So, okay, they make an, an estimate. Yes. And, and then the, the, what happens is the legislature abides by, has to abide by the estimate. If the estimate is wrong, then the budget isn't balanced. Am I right? Right. And, and as, as time goes on, if, you know, if, they, if they come up with something that balances and then CR changes their numbers, right, uh, then, then there's, you know, you know, renewed turmoil at the legislature because they have to, they have to balance to the current numbers. So the, the balance comes out of the, C, the Council on Revenues. That's the, it's really balancing against what the, the Council on Revenues is telling them is, is going to be the, uh, the revenue to the state. Right. I mean, that's a little troublesome to me in the sense that uh, it's not, a, it's not a, an absolute statement at all. It's a statement, it's a requirement that they try, and try meaning that they follow the Council on Revenues, which but, could be mistaken. Yeah, but, but it's, it's, it's better than mere guesswork. Of course. Yeah, I mean, I, I would rather put it in the hands of, of, of you know, trained people, uh, you know, even though they're, you know, a lot of them are volunteers. No, they're also guessing. As, as, a, as opposed to, as a opposed to the guess. politicians themselves. <laughs> it's just a better guess. And it's, it's, hopefully it's not rife with politics right. when they make the guess. Now, now uh, and, and speaking of that, let me, let me tell you about another constitutional provision. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I brought a picture on this one, but, but let me, let me kind of give you some background first. Um, for for uh, a number of years, uh, between 1981 and 2009, uh, we've had a constitutional provision that says, oh, if, if the state runs up surpluses for a couple of years in a row, then you've got to give some money back to the people. And, uh, and to, to accomplish this, uh, we had something called the general income tax credit. Okay, so uh, what did they actually do? We've had surpluses. We've had surpluses for, let, let's say, um, uh, 20 out of the last 29 years. So 20 out of the 29 years, uh, we were eligible to give some, you know, some, some money back to the taxpayer. Um, and can you put up the picture that shows what they actually did? Okay, so um, see all those, all those years, uh, there, there are 29 years. There are nine years where nothing came back and that's because we didn't have surpluses for two years in a row. Uh, for 15 out of the 29 years, the, what they gave back was a dollar, one dollar. So, um, you know, in, in a couple of years, they, they, they tried giving, you know, some more substantial monies. At the height of it, what's the high point there? Uh, uh, so it was, I think it was $125 in uh, 1989. And that's for every taxpayer in the state? Yes. Uh, in 2007, they also had one which went up to 160, but it was uh, it was based on how much you made. So you made you made more, you got less. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean uh, they, they made some efforts in some years, but can you explain why those years are so high and the rest of them are at a dollar or less? Well, uh, first year out of the gate uh, in 1981, uh, you know, fresh after the Constitution uh, was minted. Uh, they said, well, yeah, we, we, I guess we better follow this. So they, they, they gave us 100 bucks. Okay. One year after that, it was, eh, you know, this is kind of crimping our style. Maybe we shouldn't give 100 bucks. So they gave us 25. So 20, 100 goes down to 25. And then the year after that, well, yeah, this, we really don't want to give that much money back. So we'll, we'll drop it to a dollar. What's this, uh, this kind of... Um, uh, so, so they are technically in compliance with the Constitution. That they gave something back. They gave something back. But the, it's, it's got to be tweaked. It wouldn't be one dollar like that. It's, that's got to be the result of a tweak. In other words, it must be something more. And they put something, you know, in, in the bread basket there. Um, can, can they do that? Can they put as much in the bread basket for next time around as they want? Uh, technically, yes, because the, that's the way the constitutional provision was written. It didn't say they have to rebate all the money back. They just, they just have to rebate some. And, some, uh, and, they, and they have. The, and they did. They can choose a dollar as some. They, they did. And then in, in 2009, of course, uh, what happened is we had a, you know, a, a provision that went to the voters and said, oh, instead of rebating this one dollar, would you allow us to put some more money in the rainy day fund? Okay. Uh, and then later on, it was a further amendment. Uh, so instead of, 
you know, putting the money in the rainy day fund, can we go, you know, make provisions for unfunded liabilities or, you know, other things like that? And, and the voters said yes. So no more, general, uh, no more general income tax credit after that. So 2009 was the last year. Well, I remember in Linda Lingle's time, she was uh, chasing the, uh, what she called, what I think everybody called, the special funds. They were sort of mysterious, and they were funds that money stayed in there for years and years, and it was not clear whether it would ever come out. I mean, does the legislature have that power? I mean, should we do something about this? Where the money could be sort of cockroached in the corner somewhere, and we wouldn't even know about it, and only special members of the government would know about it, and they could yeah, put... Yeah, there's, there's, been, there's been a big fight in the legislature every year. Uh, you know, there, there are uh, people, you know, like Sylvia Luke, for example, who, who try to ferret the fun, you know, these, these uh, pots of money out and, uh, and, and get rid of them so they can be appropriated later, any, anything else. Uh, we've also advocated for that in, in the foundation because that increases transparency. You have, you know, uh, money that's socked away somewhere uh, out, outside of, um, you know, outside of the sunlight. Uh, that's, that's not good for transparency. That's not good for, you know, a good governance. Um, but, but agencies love them. Agencies love them. They, they, they said, oh, we, we need to have this program and we need to have it a, a dedicated funding source. Otherwise, you can't be sure uh, that, this, that this program will, will continue to exist. So, so they've, um, uh, and, and they've, and they've gotten a lot of uh, like interest groups uh, that are aligned with the industry's mission, uh, the uh, agency's mission uh, to buy into that, for example. So, uh, so if you have like De Department of Land and Natural Resources, uh, they advocate for like you know special funds for net land preservation and and uh, taking care of the environment and, and the and the environmental groups are all in you know you got to do this you got to do this um, and then you know and they and they fight with the uh, with the money committees who don't want them uh, so uh, an unending battle yeah interesting and your chart shows that in recent years it's it been a dollar or zero. And there hasn't been any significant return of tax money to the taxpayers. Uh, at the same time, I, I, you know, my information is the same: is that is that the money builds up in these funds we didn't even know about. And I guess if I'm a legislator and I want to get rid of money, I mean, get it off the table, put it away somewhere, so I don't have to return it to the taxpayer. There's lots of ways for me to do that through these special funds, no? Well, I mean, and you don't even need to do that because there, there are current needs um, like unfunded liabilities. Okay, we, we, we've been talking a lot about those. We have a problem. We have a problem in that we have promised uh, our state employees all kinds of post-employment benefits, right? Are we going to have the money to pay those off when these people actually retire? Uh, the, the actuaries are now saying that it's, it's going to take, you know, X million dollars, um, but, the, but that's assuming that the current assets in the, the retirement system and EUTF will bring in 7% every year, which, is, which in current economic conditions is like really un unrealistic. Uh, so and could get more unrealistic. The market's been shaky lately. That, that is true. Um, and if uh, uh, if the actual rate of return is lower, uh, like, like let's let's knock it down to maybe three three and a half percent, then then your unfunded liabilities are kind of more like you know, thirty five forty million dollars. Uh, I'm sorry, thirty five more forty billion, billion dollars. dollars with a B. As against our annual budget, which is what ten or twelve billion. Uh, fourteen. Fourteen, 14 billion. billion. So you can see that you know that 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 forty billion dollars is. Is uh, is huge on 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 the scale of the way we operate here in Hawaii. Right. So so something has got to give. Um, you know, don't 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 let anybody tell you that the uh, there's a there's a in excess of money in the in the in the state government right now. There really there really isn't. Well, then is it maybe it's understandable that they take they don't give any money back, and they hold it for a rainy day. Because we all know there's going to be a rainy day. Maybe it's a good idea. Yeah, but what what what's what's been happening recently is is like around, you know, July, June 30th, July 1st, or some, you know something like that. You know, some somebody from 
uh, the governor's office or budget and finance goes, goes on and says, oh, we have this tremendous surplus of over a billion dollars, right? And of course, uh, the, the, the public worker unions go, okay, fine. We, we know exactly what our marching orders are and we're gonna, we want some of that. And don't tell, don't tell me that you, you don't have money because you just, you just said you have money. And then, and then the very next month, the, um, uh, the administration goes to all the unions and says, oh, um, you, know, you know that uh, $1 billion we were talking about? It, it's already all gone. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've already spent it. Yeah. So it's not there anymore. Because the union had a place for it. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, it's, it's, it went to fund, like, unfunded liabilities, or it went to, you know, uh, this reserve or that. You can always find ways to spend money. I know that at home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. We're talking about uh, his article in Civil Beat. We're talking about the legislature. And when we come back, I, I really like to get into what CONCON might have done or might do, might do, if, it, if there is a CONCON, in order to ameliorate these problems. Can you wait? Sure. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> this is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king come banging on your chest, you can beat the world, you can beat the war, you can talk to God, go banging on his door, you can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock, you can move a mountain, you can break rocks, you can be a master, don't wait for luck, dedicate yourself and you can find yourself. Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, host of the Asian Review here on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5.30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss, and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un. The possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then. We're back with Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, talking about balancing the budget, um, talking about his article in Civil Beat, um, talking about CONCON and what it could do to help ameliorate these problems around our, our budgeting difficulties. Yeah. Well, you know, what you have to realize is that all of the provisions that I talked to you about, uh, the one about the... Um, you know, rebating monies to the people about the expenditure ceiling. We also enacted a debt limit uh, and, and a balanced budget uh, provision. Those all came out of the 78 CONCON, all of them. Uh, and, and, and they were trying to restore some semblance of, um, uh, you know, responsible budgeting uh, to the legislature. Uh, because at the time it was perceived that uh, you got to do something, otherwise the legislature can go out of control. Uh, boy, were, 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 were they, they, did they have a point? Yeah. Uh, so, but, but, but the problem, I think, was that the provisions that they enacted, they basically had no teeth, right? Um, the, the provisions basically said, well, okay, you, you, you need to state your reasons why you're not doing it this way, and you need to maybe have, you know, have a few more votes. Um, easily done. Easily done. So it, it was very easy for the legislature to beat these provisions into submission, especially if we in the electorate weren't watching or, 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 or didn't, didn't raise a fuss. And, and we didn't, because mm -hmm. that's, that's not the kind of people we are. Um, so, you know, what could be different this time? You know, one, we could have a CONCON, -con and we could enact uh, some more, uh, you know, so, some some fiscal provisions that had a, that actually have some teeth in them this time. Okay, because 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 we know from experience that you know you, you put something in there, it's aspirational, or if there's a really low hurdle to jump, go jump it. I mean, that's that's what experience has taught us, uh, or. Uh, we as a people have to be more vigilant and we have to know when these, uh, we, when these departures from sound fiscal policy surface and we got to say something 
to make sure that lawmakers toe the line. You know, we, we, we can't, you know, make it so that they can, you know, jump over the line without consequences. Mm -hmm. They've got to be consequences. Yep. Yeah, and, and, and the Tax Foundation is involved in this, what, every year, all the time. You're always yeah, we, 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 try, we try to, to make people are informed, make, make sure that people are informed yeah. so they can make, uh, you know, good decisions about how to proceed or, or, or how, to, how to follow what, what, what's actually going on in the square building. Well, let me make you, um, <clears throat> let me make you the CONCON. Let's assume for this discussion that the vote on the CONCON is positive in November, two weeks from now. <clears throat> And uh, they see these problems, and uh, they try to tackle them. What sort of amendments would you want, would you like to see, to create a greater fiscal responsibility? Well, um, I, I'd like to see an expenditure ceiling with some teeth to it. Okay. The, um, uh, the provision that was put in in 78 was, you know, expenditure shouldn't be growing faster than the rate of the economy. Makes sense. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, and and if there is some kind of you know dire emergency, then uh, th then yeah they can break this, but it's got to be it's got to be some kind of dire emergency. And and it's not something that you you break routinely or every year or every two years. Okay. Um, even you know back in two thousand one we had when we had the fiscal uh, with the, the Felix consent decree, that was creating you know lots of more. Uh, um, Lots more cost for the DOE. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we should have realized that that is now a cost of providing education, and we should have figured it into the budget, rather than rather than just busting the budget. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You're talking about the budget, by you know, as a mathematical experience, but at, at the end of the day, um, query in the in the way things work right now, can we pay? Can, with this economy, the size of the state, the population of the state, the skill set of the state, can, can we pay uh, the forty billion or whatever it is in unfunded liabilities in a timely fashion? And I, I'm I'm thinking of Puerto Rico, and I'd like to raise that with you later. Um, but you know, are, are we able to do this? Some some enterprises can't pay the bills. Can we pay the bills the way it's set up right now? Uh, if there's the easy way and the hard way. The easy way is we raise taxes, we, we, we raise taxes a lot, and, and, we, and we beat up everybody, okay? Will there be consequences? You know, that, that's, that's, the, that's the, um, the issue I, I, I put to you. If there are no consequences, that's what they'll do. Right. It's up to that point. I mean, you, you, make, you, you, make, you make a chart. You say up to X, there are, we, we don't feel there would be serious consequences, so we'll raise it up to X. But if it goes beyond X, and there will be serious consequences... Then we won't do it. Then we won't do it, because we don't want those consequences. Yeah, like one, one consequence w would be, uh, you know, said, let, said legislators who vote for, for this you know, taxing provision, you know, get tossed out of their ear uh, in, in the next election. Okay, that's one consequence. Another consequence is, you know, people start leaving the state by the droves, sure. which has already started happening. Okay. There has been a net out migration of people from the state. Yes, and and some some legislators some legislators don't know this, or or they're in denial. But this is actually happening. This is very bad for the economy and the ability of the state to raise money. Yeah, because the, the fewer people we've got, uh, you know, the more of us have to shoulder the burden. Yeah. I mean, the, the the fewer of us are are left to shoulder the burden, so more falls upon each of us. Okay, so you have to be careful if you raise taxes. Yeah. Um, but would you raise taxes a little bit in order to deal with these uh, unfunded liabilities? Going well, the, the, other, the other way is, 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 is you, is you, you know, go into these departments, you come in with a sharp pencil or a sharp knife, and, 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 and see what kind of fat is in there. Um, with, with these, like, really, really big departments, uh, it's, you're probably going to find something. Because, you know, it's... it's uh, I, I think there have been studies done, and and uh, you have you have big organizations. You got uh, you have more uh, more waste and abuse. You know because, when, because it's easier to hide stuff. When Maria hit, you know, Puerto Rico was in bad shape anyway. Uh, they yeah. had suffered a default on their state bonds. Um, they were something like eighty billion dollars in the hole for a population of something in the order of three million, which is little more than twice of what we have. 
And, um, you know, we can't go there. We can't let that happen to us. That's a disaster. Well, we're almost uh, there now. Yeah, and, and what worries me is that we could have a storm just like they had. And, of course, FEMA will help you, hopefully. The White House will help you, hopefully. But you, you really would like to have a rainy day fund, literally, <laughs> in order to rebuild the state and build it better, which is more costly than simply rebuilding it. <laughs> And, you know, taking all those steps to deal with uh, sea level rise and climate change and the homeless, all the unfunded liabilities. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, we need, we need something really remarkable, something dramatic uh, to get us out of this kind of mindset of everything will be fine. What is that? How do we do that? How would you do it if you were running this CONCON? That's would you, would you, can you, would you take existing state liabilities, such as the one you mentioned to the retirement system, the ERS, and say, we know that you've been counting on X benefits, but you know, we don't have the money. We're going to have to reduce those benefits. I, I, I'm, not, I'm guessing here, but I think a CONCON could do that. Um, and that might save us several billion dollars. Yeah. That's... That's a possibility. I mean, the the existing protection uh, for the for the retirees and stuff uh, is contained in the Constitution now, so it would need some kind of constitutional action to change that. I mean, you know, right now uh, you you have a disaster. Uh, you need you know money for uh, emergency services. You know, police, fire, uh, and you ha and you have these. Uh, liabilities that were promised, okay, you can't touch the monies or the liabilities that were promised to the retirees. Okay? Under the Constitution, you can't touch them. Yeah. Okay. Even, even though there's an emergency and you need money for emergency services. And then there's OHA. You know, I mean, a lot of people are, uh, have, have a connect OHA with CONCON, uh, either on the, on the side of OHA, OHA it costs too much. It's a, it's a waste. It's inefficient. It's corrupt. Um, so we should knock it off and save that money. And I and I think there's a lot of money goes right off the top into OHA. Um, or uh, other people are afraid that OHA will come in there and and try to ask for more money, not less. And so there's this fear on both sides. And I think it plays in in this con con, in, in whether to do a con con. But, uh, don't you agree that OHA is a a principal object in the conversation about whether we should do a CONCON, what would happen at a CONCON? I, I'm not so sure the principal object is OHA. I, I, would, I would focus more on DHHL. Mm, okay. okay. Because DHHL, under our current constitution, has a requirement that they be adequately funded. Okay. And there was uh, a legal dispute that was going on between uh, the branches of government, you know, um, I forget the name of the case, but uh, but it was it was a, it was a big case uh, re 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 regarding uh, the uh, alleged un underfunding of DHHL for the last you know uh, several years. Now, one one problem is that DHHL has been able to spend their money. It hasn't. It hasn't. Uh, y y uh, they they were get getting money from I think some federal programs as well. Uh, they weren't spending the money, and, and, and the feds were saying, okay, well, you, if you're not going to use it, we won't give it to you. Yeah. So that's fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but, but tell that to the, you know, the 20 or 30,000 people who are, who are on, the, uh, on, on the waiting list for Hawaiian Homestead. Yeah, the, yeah, the failure of the, uh, of the agency is what. Well, that, you know, that calls for leadership. It calls for, um, you know, the gadfly calls for the Tax Foundation and similar organizations. Go out there and find out whether our tax money is fair and whether it's being used fairly. And I think one of the problems is that, you know, you say the word tax, people fall asleep all around the room, um, and nobody really wants to roll up his shoulders, nobody but you, um, and, and figure out what's going on and make it right. And as a result, there's a certain amount of, um, you know, uncaring, uh, complacency. Uh, in the legislature and in the public arena about the subject. Yeah, now, now, one, I think, good thing about OHA, that, that you mentioned OHA, uh, is that we get to, you know, we, the general electorate, get to elect the trustees. 
And uh, I, I think there have been more trustees, who are, especially the newer ones that are coming in, who, who, are, who are worried about uh, the future of OHA and, and how it's been expending the resources that, it's ha that it has been. Uh, and, and, and they want to shake things up. And, and I, they, they just need the votes to do that. Yeah. But I think it's a, in large part it's educating them. It's educating the legislature. It's educating the agencies. It's getting everybody in the same boat, you know, with a sort of altruistic, greater good view of things, and certainly educating the people so they don't blow this off. And so you're doing very important work, Tom. We, we try to. Tom Yamachika, President of the Tax Foundation. Thank you, Jay. Thank well, you for having me we'll, on the show. We'll have you back soon. Thanks.